circular, still solid southbound, heading down towards the gyratory system. We've got queues back past Ivy Avenue, and more or less back towards the Harrow Road underpass. It hasn't let up all morning over there. And over now to the first water main, that continues to close Bridgewater Road, northbound Trent Union Road, Bridgewater Avenue. Marcus, come on now, that get. Marcus, come on. Oh. Come on, you got the interview. Up. Come on, yeah. Good babies. Come on, up, come on. Come on, yeah. Time to get up, Sarah. I can't go to school today. Why not? I've got yellow fever. Up. And pleurisy. Come on, babies. Come on. Come on. Mom! Come on. Molly. Excuse me, this is a private room. Can I take the dogs for ah, that? You. After you've had a wash, just don't say that word. What? Walking? Oh, yes, Molly. She did that on purpose, horrible child. <laughs> Just be relaxed, uh, polite, and ask intelligent questions. You know what? How intelligent you have to be to stack shells? Well, don't do that. I wouldn't like it if it made you jump for your throat. I wouldn't mind. You brushed your teeth? Um, yes. You wouldn't lie to your mother, would you? No. That was no hot water. I told you to get up. Oh. Had to wash my hair in cold water. <sighs> would you mind closing your mouth when you eat? I know it's a new experience for you to be up before lunchtime, but... Sarah, I... just worry about yourself and eat your breakfast. Molly, sit up, please. Will you wear one of those uniforms? What's it? In the supermarket. Will you wear a uniform? Don't get the job, Molly, so don't worry about it. Sarah. I think you will get it. Thank you, Mo. Where's the juice? Have you lost the use of your legs? Good luck, love. Just remember, be polite and don't mumble and you'll be fine. I love you. Love you. Toast is burning! <laughs> Turn just once round the block. Walkies! <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Somebody decided to jump under a train in Victoria. Mr. Uh, Bell. Brian Addis. I think you'll find everything in order. Hope so, anyway. Um, you like some tea? Just your accounts, thank you, Mr. Addis. Hello. Hiya. Yeah. Did you miss me? Um, my son. Oh, God. <laughs> She's going to have to come up for air sometime. What's he like? Andrew. He's OK. Keeps himself pretty much to himself. Have you spoken to her about it? I don't know what to say to her. I thought you two had a good relationship. 
used to. And now she's floating away on a sea of hormones. How's she doing this term? Well, it's not that she's not bright enough. Far from it. It's just she finds it hard to concentrate. I can't think why. Oh, she'll be fine. I just don't want her to get hurt, that's all. Oh, Faith. Not even you can stop that. Thank you. Anything I can get you? No, thank you. Let us roll our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball <laughs> and tear our pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life, through the iron grates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our son stand still, yet we can make him run. Yet we can make him run. Thank you, Martin. So what do you think Andrew Marvel was trying to say into his coin mistress? Clyde? What? If you weren't staring out the window like an unintelligent haddock, you'd know what we were talking about, wouldn't you? Yes, miss. Hmm. Anyone? He was saying... Hand up, please, Sally. Right, Sally. He was saying, if I don't do the business now, miss, they'll never do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Yeah, but if you'd known Sally, miss, you wouldn't have had to write the poem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that's enough. Sit down, sit down. Sally, 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 how small the margins are in this business. So you should have been registered for VAT, don't you have an accountant? I do my own books. Well, this is hardly a business empire, is it? Have you been charging VAT to your customers? No. So if I haven't been charging it, I can hardly pass it on to you, can I? I, I don't have it to give. If I promise that in the future... Mr Addis, you should have been charging VAT to your customers. That's the point. Well, I'm telling you that I haven't. But from now on... Your I... VAT liability will be backdated over the last four years. Well, and I'm sure we'll be able to work out some sort of repayment scheme. Of course, there'll be penalties. Excuse me, Mr Bell, but... Do you have some sort of hearing impediment? I don't have any of your money. I don't even have any of my money. I have nothing to give you. This is my business. This is all I have. The job had probably gone before you'd even got there. Molly, don't feed the dogs at the table. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't feed me. What's that? I don't know, it's a bit late. Eat your dinner, please, Sarah. I'm not hungry. I am hungry. I only put you sleep. <laughs> what sort of questions did they ask you? Hey? Sarah! Are you a left or a right-handed shell stacker? Would you be embarrassed if someone asked you where the tampons are? Enough, thank you. You're not too big to get a thump, you know. Look, could we please try and finish a meal without you two bickering? Where's Dad? I told you I don't know. Well, here he is! Molly, sit down. Molly! I Mo want to show him my parts. You're late, love. Daddy, sit down, I'll get you dinner. This. Daddy! Marcus hasn't had the best of days, I'm afraid. I didn't get the job, Dad. He had three brain cells too many. Do you like it? It's for the shop. You need all your paper clips in it. Brian, Marcus didn't get the supermarket job. I like Marcus. Brian? <laughs> Brian! Sarah, take Molly out. 
Started it once, we can start it again. With what? As it is, we'll have to remortgage the house to pay off the debts. Remortgage the house. And that's what we'll do. How will we afford the mortgage payments? I've still got my job. Faith. I'm talking about the best part of 40 grand. 40,000 pounds. It's gonna break us. Nothing's gonna break us. Perhaps he's ill. He's never ill. He wouldn't be having an affair, would he? I guess. He's, he's probably just had a really bad day, that's all. I'll be wrong about anything. No. He thinks we should sell the house. What? That's our... I, I told him that's not going to happen. That's our home, Brian. I know it is. And it'll stay our home. I'm just not quite sure how at the moment. You've got to think of this as a fresh start. Not an ending. People will always want flowers. Just not from a florist. What do you mean? Look, we've been struggling to keep our heads above water for years. Mail orders where it's at now. The internet, supermarkets. <laughs> Maybe the fat man was trying to put me out of my misery. Have you been keeping all this to yourself? You got enough on your plate, love. Are you unhappy, Brian? No, I'm not unhappy. It just. What do you do if you don't have a florist? I like to grow my own flowers. Your own? Where? Ah, oh, it's a stupid idea. I'll be the judge in that. <laughs> Brian? Well, it's just that the house is worth so much now. If we sell it, we could release some money and, and pay off a VAT and a mortgage. And with the remainder... Go on. We could buy a place in the country, a small holding. I could grow flowers and, and sell them to the people that I'm buying them from now. We wouldn't make a fortune, but we could grow our own vegetables, and raise chickens and pigs. And if we had enough land, we could grow organic produce, sell it to shops and restaurants. There's money in that, I'm sure. Most of all, we'd be in control, growing things. It's just a simpler, cleaner life. I, I told you it was a stupid idea. It's not a stupid idea. It's lovely, but... I ignore me, love. I'm just a bit rattled. How long have you been thinking about this? It's always been at the back of my mind. Why didn't you say? Because I had a business to hold down and a family to support. I've only got the family. We'd have to take Molly and Sarah out of school. Marcus wouldn't come. You don't think he would? Of course not. He's a city boy. I'd have to leave me job. Oh, forget he even mentioned it. Brian. No, forget he even mentioned it. Come on, have another drink. Look, I know you'd love to live in the country one day. I would too. Maybe when the kids have left home. Same again. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 
Teaching inspectors say a school in northeast London. <laughs> Road and Wick Lane still closed after the fire. An accident causing problems southbound through Wandsworth and the AC West Hill Junction of Lebanon Road. We've got one lane out at the moment. Traffic lights out over in Heathrow. Coming up from the Road. We've just got very heavy traffic coming into the end of the road. They're just down into the A4 through Chiswick. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's Lot. I am five minutes late. Fifteen. And you have got exams this summer. So what do you do, eh? Get your books out. Read. Talk intelligently among each other. Talk unintelligently among each other. No. You decide to tattoo our mate. You asked us to, miss. <laughs> sort of. Not with a compass and a felt tip. If he dies of blood poisoning, I'm not going to visit you in prison, which is where most of you are going to end up anyway. Sorry, that was unfair. I've, uh, I've had a bit of a time of it since we last met, so uh, get out your poetry books and let's find the most depressing poem we can, shall we? Right. Who's the most depressing poet in the English language? Wilfred Owen. Not the cheeriest, Martin, I'll give you that. But he had his reasons, I think you'll agree. Anyone else? T.S. Eliot. Good. Good. Depressing and incomprehensible at the same time. So, uh, let's turn to laughing Tom Eliot's The Wasteland, shall we? Let's get deep down, miserable. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Addis. Mr. Roberts would like to see you in his office. Oh, a break? No. Now. Ooh. The car was stolen sometime in the early hours of Sunday morning. The police say there are several eyewitness descriptions of the driver, and they all implicate Andrew Miller. Did they arrest him? Only I saw him this morning mucking around with his mates. No. They didn't arrest him because he has an alibi. And he says he spent all of Saturday night with your daughter. What? What's more to the point, so does Sarah. Sarah was in bed in our house on Saturday night. On her own. Look, I know he wasn't at your house, Faith. I know it, you know it, the police know it, Andrew Miller knows it, but Sarah has given him an alibi, so... To be perfectly frank, it's uh, not Andrew Miller I'm concerned with. Because he wasn't. When I came in.
into your bedroom late on Saturday night to shut your window. You were cuddled up with your teddy bear. So don't come the gangster's mole with me, all right? He said he didn't do it. Grow up. You think you're so clever, Sarah, and you're not. You're stupid. Stupid for lying for someone like that. You don't know anything about him. I know you're lying for him. I know that you're falling behind at school. I know that you're one of the brightest people I've ever met, and I am not going to stand back and let you throw it all away. Are you going to tell the police he wasn't with me? I don't know what I'm going to do. Because if you do, I'll tell him he was. It'll be your word against mine. Faith, you're having a bad dream, love. No, it was a lovely dream. My God, Brian, I think you might be right. What about? About moving to the country. I'm going to wake the kids. It's the middle of the night. So? Maybe it's not just your dream, Brian. I think it might be all of ours. If we sell a house, we can pay off the vat man, pay off all our debts and still have a sum left over. I won't buy you much round here. True. No way. I'm not changing schools to live in some horrible suburb. Sarah, let your dad finish. I'm not changing schools, that's all, just so you know. Oh. All my life. Ever since I was your age, Sarah, I've wanted to grow things. Have a piece of land of my own and, and plant things and, and nurture things and, uh... See, sometimes what looks like the end of something, well, it's really the beginning of something else. Is it me or are you two talking complete nonsense in the middle of the night? It won't be easy uh, uh, and I'm not going to pretend that it's going to be. What won't be easy? We want to move to the country. This is some sort of joke, right? It's no joke. You screw up your VAT and expect us to live in a field. Sarah! I, I wouldn't suggest this if I didn't think it was a good move for all of us. Well, it's not a good move for me, so I won't be coming with you. Sarah, sit down. I'll go and live with Nan. No, you won't. Night, everyone. Sarah! Sarah! Let her go. What about you, Puppet? Can I have a pony? <laughs> what about me? Marcus, we understand that you won't want to come with us. And we feel terrible that you'll have to find somewhere else to live. But I know your nan would love to have you for as long as you like. Oh, as long as you could put up with her. Can't I come with you? 
Well, we just both assume that... Well, there's not much happening for me here, is there? Of course you can come. I'll have a quick word with Sarah. Thanks, son. Shall you have some tea? Yeah. All right? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Sarah. I've been married to your dad for 20 years. And in all that time, he's never asked for anything from us. He just worked hard and tried to do his best for us all. But he was never really happy, Sarah. I can see that now. Can you imagine how strange that makes me feel? Knowing that all that time he had a dream nagging away at him. Maybe it is a crazy idea and and it won't work out. I, I don't know. But at least your dad will never have to say if only. The two saddest words in the English language. I've got a wonderful life here, Sarah. I love my family, my friends, my job. I've got everything I've ever wanted. But I'm prepared to give all that up for your dad because I love him. And I believe in him. I'm asking you for two years of your life. When you're 18, you can go and do whatever you want. You can marry Andy Miller, you can, you can have his kids and you can nick as many cars as you like. But until then, I want you to come with us. I want you to support your dad. A time in his life when he needs us most. You're right. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. <laughs> Come in, <here>, you. <sighs> It's not quite so pretty on a wet Tuesday in February. Do you like hummus, Mrs. Addis? Excuse me? This couple from London I sold to last year. Seven months they lasted. Couldn't get hummus, apparently. Well, the Addises are made of stronger stuff, Mr. Roebuck. Have you or your husband any experience of running a small holding? No. But you are from the countryside originally. No. Hmm. If you raise that eyebrow again, Mr. Roebuck, I shall have to rip it off and feed it to my dog.
sitting room dining room. I think she likes you. It's all right, she won't buy it. Not unless you're an estate agent. So hopefully this simple scheme will uh, enhance... That's brilliant! All I have to do now is find us something to buy. <sighs> well, I'm not exactly spoiled for choice, Danny. Right. No, no, they're OK. Uh, uh, Molly's butchery in Buccarini. Yeah, oh, and uh, Marcus, he's... Uh, He's fixing his engine. Not on the kitchen table, I hope. No, no, of course not on the kitchen table. What about Sarah? Oh, she's just signing a lot and reading Jean-Paul Sartre. I can't find my DKMY top. She says she can't find a DKMY top. Tell her it's in the ironing pile. It's in the ironing pile. What's it doing there? She knows it's my favourite top. She says, thank you so much, Mother. You really do look after us all so beautifully. <laughs> oh, she'll be all right. This hotel charges a million pounds a unit. Okay, take care. Yeah, I will. And I promise I'll find her something. Brian, it's so lovely, Daniel. I, uh, I gave the keys to the florist back today. How'd you feel about that? I feel, uh, I feel bloody fantastic. Yeah. Sleep tight, love. Bloody old parsley. What have we done, eh? There must be something better than this. There is, Mrs. Addis. It's just that you can't afford it. A converted pig shed wasn't quite what we had in mind, Mr. Roebuck. Ah, the gap between our dreams and our realities can be a very distressing one, Mrs. Addis. If you'll excuse me, I really must be getting on. What about this one? Villachets? Uh, a bit out of your league, Mrs. Addis. I think I'll be the judge of that, Mr. Roebuck. I'd like to see it. Mrs. Addis. Now, please. So why are they moving out? The Dennings. Oh, they've already gone. The bottom fell out of pigs. Mm, nasty. And the bank called in their loan. It's not quite the EC land of plenty down here that you townies think it is. Should be able to see it from here. Can you stop the car, please? Bit of an architectural rag bag, and rather isolated, which is one of the main reasons we can't shift it. 16th century origins, but other bits have just been tagged on willy-nilly through the centuries. Nice position, though. How much land comes with it? Uh, about ten acres. Can you get to it through here? Uh, I suppose...
I didn't show you the details, Mrs. Addis. 15,000 over your limit with another, what, 30, 40, 50 to get it up and running? Shall we go? I'd like to put in an offer. I beg your pardon? For the shades. I want to make an offer. Hadn't you better talk to your husband, uh, your financial advisors? I thought your limit was... I want the house, Mr. Rover. What's more, I think the house wants us. I was afraid you'd say that. You'll love it too. I could hear the fields calling your name. Brian, Brian, come to us, come to us. It'll leave us very exposed, Faith. There'll be no leeway if things go wrong. They won't go wrong. I'm asking a hell of a lot of my family already. We hadn't escaped at this time because of this house. But there's an ex time. And only a fool would pretend that we're not taking the most almighty gamble. We'd be wide open. See, I thought if we could find a property for about 195,000, we'd still have a decent amount of capital to go down there with. See, Philly Shays is 260,000. We should only leave us 15,000 pounds to spend. And by your own admission, a house needs a lot of work. And there's animals to buy. Rotivators, seed. Who knows how long it'll be before we're self-sufficient. You just come down and see it. Faith, what's the point of me falling in love with something and we can't even afford it? Just a quick peek. Then I'll show you every converted concrete abattoir in Devon. And I did sort of say that we'd buy it. What? Before someone else snapped it up. You didn't sign anything. They said they'd accept our offer. I haven't even seen it. Look, um, it's not legally binding. We'll just tell them that you, um... Oh, we were just discussing whether or not I should have my belly button pierced. What do you reckon? Look, do you want to see some pictures from Devon? No, thanks. Sarah, why don't you invite a young man for tea or something? What young man? Andy. Why on earth would I want to bring him here for? So we could meet him. He might steal your car. I'll lock it in the garage. Why do you want to meet him? You'll never see him again after we go and live in Kazakhstan. Devon. And nor will I, so what's the point? Hello, oh, yeah, Brian Addis. What battery? Still back this I understood that my wife. What was the battery doing out of the remote in the first place? I'm playing with it. 
Mr. Robot, I don't know what it's like down there, but where I come from, the words your offer has been accepted have no ambiguity whatsoever. It's not for you to judge if we can afford it or not. Pass his eyes light up. Actually, no, I don't think it's remotely fair. Firstly, because they live in Bristol and we live in London. Who lives in Bristol? Shh. Who lives in Bristol? Secondly, my wife saw the house first. She made an offer, and that offer was accepted by you on behalf of the vendors. Oh, I don't think it's reasonable that you continue to show people around the house. What? I have to warn you, Mr. Roebuck. I'll be taking legal advice about this. Goodbye. What's happened? Dad, pass me seats in the battery. Your friend, Mr. Roebuck, continue to show people around the house. Someone else has made an offer. He can't do that. He has. Apparently, he wasn't convinced your offer was serious. Well, they're complete... Roebuck's idea of a fair fight, as he puts it, is first come, first served. The first written offer with a backup letter from the bank gets the house. Have we got a letter? No. But what about Harry? If you tell him how important it is, he'll be quick. What's his number? No, he left the office ages ago. So phone him at home. Oh, damn that man! You're angry. Of course I'm angry. But you don't want to buy the house. You haven't even seen it. Why are you angry? Look, if I don't want to buy something, I'll decide. Not some jumped-up country estate agent. What are you talking about? Oh, your mum's seen a house that she likes. Is it a nice house? It's a very nice house, Molly. A farmhouse. But it's very, very expensive. I see his face when he arrives to open up in the morning. And we're waiting for him with our offer. Where are you going? Harry's house. He'll get that letter sorted out tonight. Even if I have to sit there with a loaded gun. Brian, you haven't even seen it. Have you seen it? That's good enough for me. What's the earliest we can get there by train? Um, there's one at ten past seven. I mean, there might be an earlier one. Right. Uh, hang on. They might have the same idea. They're only coming from Bristol. They'll get there before we do. Came down last night, we might already be too late. Then it just wasn't meant to be. At my back, I always hear times wing chariot hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie deserts of vast. Not now, Faith. <laughs> Can't we just go through them? Who were here first? Yeah, we are actually in a serious hurry. How much difference is ten minutes going to make? About twenty pounds. Imagine what? It's them. Let's be cool. Okay. Why? No idea. Go. Okay, thanks, Mike. This is Addis. We've got the written off. Yeah. And, 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 and. 
back. Well? Excuse me? Oh, there's our offer. And there's our letter from the bank. You said first come, first served. Well, I'll be the first. I was just speaking to the other couple, actually. No, you weren't. We've just seen them get out of the car. Who did? The other couple. Really? We saw them. But I just spoke to them. They're in Bristol. They decided the house needed too much work. They've pulled out of the sale. Please. My entire future is at stake, and I wouldn't mind taking a look at it. It's quite a lot of work, actually. Faith! Well? It's... It's what? It's what? You. So you keep saying, Mum. So everyone keeps saying. Well, I just hope you know what you're doing, that's all. People have been living off the land for thousands of years. All right, I might not be an expert, but... You're stupid farming your family. I mean, you can't just rip teenagers out of the middle of London and stick them in the middle of nowhere. Marcus wants to come. There's nothing for him here. And Sarah? Sarah will be all right. Oh, you think so, do you? And your wife? Faith, it's what we both want. Brian, don't be so bloody naive. She's going because you want her to, because you have this stupid daydream and she wants you to be happy. And she's leaving her job, she's leaving her friends, she's leaving everything because she wants you to be happy. So don't kid yourself she's going for any other reason, because she's not. And that's one hell of a responsibility you've got. Please, Mum. Let me do what I think is right for my family. Right. I'm going to say a horrible thing now. May God forgive me. Well, don't say it, then. I've got a few pounds set aside for a rainy day. No, Mum. I always thought it would come to you when you found what you were really looking for. Mum, I don't want your money. Good, because you're not getting it. I think what you're doing is wrong, Brian. And if you go belly up down there... Which we won't. Don't come to me to bail you out, because I won't do it. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. I'll give you six months. Leave alone, Sean. No theatre, no restaurants, no cinemas, no public transport. No friends, no excitement. No you. No kids. No, this place. Oh, stop. You have me in tears. You'll miss us to bits, I promise you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this place. It's in your veins, Faith, and you know it. Take the notice of him, he's just jealous. No, he's right. This place is in me veins. There are other places. What if I'm running away, Rachel? Me and Brian... What if we think that we're being brave, but really we're just being cowards? You haven't a cowardly bone in your body. You reckon? And it's like you said. If you don't do it, you'll never know. I want to half miss you, though. Good luck, mate. Bye. 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 Bye.
see ya. I never did like that woman. Oh, what now? Hiya. I thought you might need some provisions. You're only going to Devon, Eddie. Not the Kalahari. They've got shops there, you know. Oh, says who? Now drive carefully. And don't talk to any strange farmers. You come and see us soon. Thanks, Faith. What for? For loving the silly sod almost as much as I do. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Stop the car! We haven't got to the end of the street yet. Sarah, we've got a long way to go. If you don't breathe, you'll get brain damage. Sorry, got to go. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Do that, Hungry. We can stop and eat on the way there. Why don't we just take you back to South London? Hey, Doug. Right. Hello, sweetheart. Now, the van won't get through. You're going to have to carry all the stuff across the field. How was your journey? A little on the quiet side. Oh, right. <laughs> Look, uh, why don't you take the girls and show them the house? Come on, then, quick. Come on. Oh, come on, then. Let's get it all off. Come on, you. Get out of the way. Get on. Isn't it beautiful? Century. Imagine that. Did they have corrugated iron in the 16th century? With later additions. So, what do you think? I don't care what I think. If you did, we wouldn't be here. Of course I care. I think it's a complete nightmare. That's what I think. Mum! Mummy, I found the secret of woods and river and fairies and everything. <laughs> did you, love? Come on then, let's have a look inside. London. It's your part of the air, so no one need come into it if you don't want them to. Well, what do you think? I'll keep it just the way it is. This is romantic. Mum. Yeah, I'll, I'll call the electricity company first thing. We have phones down here. Oh! Certainly do. Now this uh, little handle thing you have to turn first, though. <laughs> Mum, find your friends if you want to. I don't want to. Mum. Yes, Molly. How big is a mouse? A mouse? Don't know. Tiny. Okay. Why'd you ask? That isn't a mouse, then, is it? Ah! Oh, 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 oh
We've done it then. Yep. I'm worried about Sarah. I know you are. You know what she's like. She's so stubborn. If she decides not to like it down here, it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. We'll keep an eye on her. I'm worried about Marcus. You are pleased he came down here. Yeah, I am. I just hope he's come for the right reason. I hope it's not pity. Go to sleep, love. Then tomorrow you can walk around your new empire. Stiff. Happy. Scared stiff. What else was that? I think Small just met Tiggy. Tiggy? The farm cat. <laughs> Good night, Faith. Mm. Good night, Brian. Maybe if Sarah can get a fix of retail therapy, she might stop scanning for a few minutes. What are you doing? Well, if you're going out of town, you'll need a trailer. What for? Well, it's market day. Might as well make a start on the animals. You want me to buy the animals? On my own? I've only read a few books. Just ask sensible questions and don't pretend to be an expert. Brian? Cow. Excuse me? A cow. We need milk. Can't we buy it in cartons just for a few weeks? No, we can't. Good morning. I'm interested in purchasing a cow. Good morning. I'm interested in purchasing a cow. What's this? Good morning. Oi! What's this for? In the middle, I'm going to find 50 guineas. There's no one talking. I've got a little place. I'm going to find you a little place, isn't it? A bit like the elephant of the castle. Huh. What, Molly? Can I have black people in there? I only live where it's nice, Molly. Isn't it nice here? Yes, it is, Molly. Right. Well, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but let's go buy a cow. This is Cascade. He's a great gun, a journey, and a nice sort of thing. Out of a thoroughbred that is from here, how much for it? Eight guineas, a thousand guineas. Give me a thousand. Eight hundred. Give me five. Five on top, thank you. Five hundred guineas. Add five hundred guineas. Five fifty. Six hundred. Six fifty. No, no. Seven fifty on top. Eight hundred. Eight fifty. Eight fifty. Nine hundred. Daddy said one day, not today. Hey, can you please not hit the animals? <laughs> My own business, Sarah. You talking to me? Yeah, can you not hit the animals? <laughs> Pick on someone your own size if you can find someone your own size. <laughs> Right, that's it. Come look at the cows. Come on. She yours? Yes, she is. Borrow my stick if you want. <laughs> no, thank you. Inbred! <laughs> <laughs> 
Start, eh? What's next then? Lunch, I think. I'll go see what's in the fridge, shall I? Uh, Marcus. Do you, uh, fancy a pint? Yeah, all right. Oh, that good milker. Is she? She's a lovely colour. Of course, she's dry at the moment. Cast you in a week or two to a Belgian blue over Old Campton Way. Oh, really? Well, I'm not that au okay fait with carving. Perhaps I should wait till she's had it. Well, Amelia knows what to do. You've got no worries there. Her udders are a bit on the low side, aren't they? Gravity, Mrs. Happens to us all. She's near time and she's a bit engorged. We'll tighten up when the calf comes. How much do you want for her? Four hundred and fifty pounds. Well, what do you think? I was away from school the day they did cows. You and I... Well, uh, we're not exactly close, are we? I always wanted us to be. Uh, running a business and everything, I, I never got round to it. Oh, all right. We were both so pleased you came down here. Anything for a laugh? Well, I don't want you staying down here to humour us. As soon as your feet start itching, you let us know. There'll be no hard feelings. You want me here, don't you? Oh, of course I do. Oh, I'm not explaining this very well, am I? Your mother came down here because she loves me. And she knows how important this is to me. The girls came down because, well, they're still our responsibility. But you came here because you wanted to be here. And that's special to me. But it only stays special if I know you're not humouring me. Dad, I promise I'll let you know when you become a pain. Good. That's all I wanted to say. <sighs> this stuff is making my nips lump. Mine too. Yeah. You want another one? Go on, then. Yeah. Come on, girl. A nice field of grass mm. waiting for you at home. Come on. Mum. Well, don't just stand there. Help me, then. How? Oh. Well, I don't know. You push it, I'll pull it. Oh, wait. Mm. Good grief. What on earth's that? It's a cow. Are you sure? I hope you didn't actually buy it or anything stupid like that. How old do you think she is? Seven. Ha! Ah, who told you that? The farmer sold her to me. She's 17 years old. If she's a day, you'd have to dig a hole before you can milk her. You do know how to milk her. <laughs> I thought not. Oh, no. Mum! Mum, I'm wants to show you some sheep. Jersey! Amelia! 
Okay. How much he cost? Four hundred and fifty pounds. I know others a bit low. Don't be cruel. Don't lift up. That's a calf's been born. When's that? About a week or two. How old is she? Seven. Teen. <laughs> Welcome to our home, Amelia. Be ever so humble. Have you two been drinking? What, are you going to call them lambs? Charles and Edward. Oh, royal sheep. Are you the best is good enough for us, eh? Come on, let's have some grass, darling. Come over here, Amelia. <laughs> we got it sorted, haven't we, eh? <laughs> We're bound to make mistakes. But a 17 year old cow. <laughs> Been so stupid. <sighs> we'll be ready next time. London doesn't have a monopoly on rip-off merchants, obviously. Did you speak to Marcus? I did. Everything all right? I think so. Good. Oh, I'm knackered. All this fresh air. Mm. And lifting all those heavy pints of cider. Mm. Mm. Bloody hell, what was that? Lovely and quiet in the country, isn't it? She makes an awful lot of noise for an old woman. Where are you going? Something's up. Amelia! What is it, girl? Faith. It's the middle of the night you're talking to a cow. Hey. She's in trouble. What's the matter, girl? Eh? What's up with her? I don't know. Mm. Go and get me cow book. He's in the kitchen. Mm. Oh, mm. give it here. I can feel something. I think it's a leg. It doesn't feel right. Shall I get a vet? We haven't got time. Can't you free the leg? No. Oh, God.
think we're going to be all right, Faith. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are. The promise is so perfect. The courage is so strong. With the will to make it work, yeah. How can your dreams be wrong?